1 Peter chapter 2 verse 25 to chapter 3 verse 7. You ready? Begin reading. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honour unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. May God bless the reading of His Word. Let us all turn to God in prayer. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to come in person to church, to study your word and to fellowship one with another. Lord, we treasure this freedom that we have to worship you and to serve you in this way. We just ask now, O God, that you be merciful to cleanse us and wash us thoroughly of all our sins. O Lord, we acknowledge that we have, our sins are great and many. Show to us, O Lord, that we may constantly repent and bear the fruit of repentance by your grace. And Lord, we come tonight once again asking that you use your holy word to help us understand your heart and your commandments unto us, thy children, how we ought to live on earth. For we know, O God, you are the omniscient God, the all-wise God. Your ways are above the ways of men and this world, its philosophies, its, its own wisdom, and your ways are always the best for mankind. So be with us, grant to us obedient hearts. We ask and pray for attentiveness and for obedient hearts. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now last week someone um, had a question after the meeting and was, and was asked to address it. Now this person asked, in the olden days, um, men often have to travel and leave their wives uh, for long periods of time. So, um, how do we view that? Okay, how do we view that? Uh, Josiah, is that your question? Not Josiah, who else? Josiah, Josiah. you forgot what you asked. Alright, whoever asked this question. All right. Everyone didn't know didn't ask that question all of a sudden. So, why am I answering this? Okay, so, but I think it's a good question. Um, well, in those days, the people travel a lot, and because of the mode of transport, it's not like, phew, and then take an aeroplane, take a speed, tra speed bullet train, and then you're there. All right. So because of the mode of transport, people may take a long time in their travel. So what happens to their children, their wife? Um, what did they do? What do you think? Now, the assumption is that, that they travel without their families, correct? That is the assumption. Now, number one, the fact that God does use the word dwell and that signifies being with the person and for marriage, um, right from the beginning of time, God said be one flesh. All right, be one flesh signifying the closeness, the oneness. Now, you can't be one flesh if you constantly live apart, right, by any stretch of imagination. Okay, it's like as well, don't get married. You're just living separate life. Um, that's all. All right. So, how do you how do you have conjugal uh, relationship to produce children? 
How do you support one another? How do you encourage one another? How do you know each other's hearts, problems? All right? And all that, even now today, fly in, fly out jobs, even the government recognizes it's destroying families. It's not a marriage anymore. Okay? So they are even thinking of ways to solve that. So yes, traveling about, um, according to God's wisdom, the family should stay together. Husband and wives, dwell with your wife. So we assume that they don't stay together. All right? But think about it. Remember Judges 19, the Levite, the, the evil Levite that traveled far away, um, and he had his, his wife with him, the, the concubine, so to speak. All right? Of course, he was an evil Levite. All right? he, 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 he killed her. But even though he was far from home, he did not just leave and go look for, look for um, a job, look for, which he shouldn't be in the first place. He should be serving God in the temple, allocate the place. But he was with his wife, all right? Now, what about Abraham? When Abraham moved out, now, he just brought his whole family, all that was with him, all right? He moved with them. He did not say, well, I'll go, and finally, when I... Um, come to the promised land, I've, things got settled, then I come back and get you all. all right? So everyone left with him. So we make that assumption um, that they travel alone. It's not necessarily the case. In fact, we see the opposite. Now, furthermore, now the fact that God gives such a command means whether, how, whether the world lives like that, um, the Christian must just not live like that. That's all. Simple as that. Okay? Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5. All right. Now shall we read 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5 reading. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas. You see here the Apostle Paul says, now I'm single doesn't mean that I have to be. Um, if it's God's will for me to be married, I can be married. Just like, you see, just like um, number one, other apostles. So other apostles were married and, and as the brethren of the Lord, right? Normal Christians. And he also brought up again the Apostle Cephas, Peter. All right? So he says, now, do I, do I have not the power um, to lead about a wife? To lead about a wife, a sister? Often in those days, um, um, also referring to, to the Jews, use those terms to refer to their, their wife also. And, and he make it clearer, a wife. All right? A wife. Now, what is lead about? Lead about as well as the other apostles. So the other apostles who had wives, they led them about. Now this word lead about um, literally means to bring them around. All right? Um, walk around with them. Bring them wherever we go. So just like other brethren, not just apostles, just like other brethren, when they have a wife, when they travel, they bring them. All right? And as those who, who are apostles and they go, um, serve in another place. They don't say, I'm going there to work, you stay here. All right? They also bring them along. So it is not a natural assumption to say that the Christians would travel around on their own. Okay? Now, the other thing also, well, their transport system, yes, indeed, would not be like today. All right? If they want to travel, um, it does take longer. Now, what happens if they need to work in a job that is in uh, one town away and then they are always taking long journeys or even travel, yeah, no, no choice, I have to work there. Then they just stay apart or every day, very long commute. All right? um, early morning, leaves at 4 a.m. and then um, reaches home at um, 10 p.m. and then the wife is already asleep, children are already asleep. So because of the travel, the mode of journey, right? And they have to work. So what do you do? All right, what do you do, Aaron, if you were living in those times? Wearing long flowing ground and then walk long journeys in sandals. Don't know what to do. Kill Cornelius, what would you do? 
You heard the question? The Cornelius? Not sure. Alright, last one. Josiah. Since it's not your question. <laughs> Say again. Try and look for another job. That's it. Try and look for another job. You see, do you believe the omnipotent God can provide for you if you obey Him? Right? If that is what God says, it is not good that the man and the woman live apart, dwell together, then look for another job. But you can't find another job that is at your job level and your salary grade. What do you do? You still look for another job. To obey God, sometimes, yes, it costs. Correct? Then you take a lower paid job. That's it. In order that the family stays together because your taking care of the family, bringing up godly seed, is more important than making more money. Alright? So Aaron, right? Would you do that? Right? Logical choice, right? To obey God above all things. God will always help you. God will always... It's just like students, right? What to do? If I don't copy, I will fail. You just obey God. You don't copy. If you fail, you fail. But you must. You must not cheat. Okay? Now, the other one is, what happens if if, well, you really cannot find a job and that is the only job you can find and you've tried and really tried what would you do, Aaron? Don't know still Don't know It's just Joshua? Relocate the family <laughs> Right? Relocate the family if that's what you have to do and there is nothing else and God has led you that way don't leave the family, the wife behind relocate the family that is why the they say just like other brethren all right they have to move some that maybe they have to travel they have to work somewhere else they have they lead about their wife they lead about their wife they don't leave the wife behind all right so now what happens if you need to buy things and it takes very very long the journey <laughs> you want to try again you just say no straight away what happens if the journey is very long then think very carefully if that's something that you really need to buy all right, can you make do with something else? Can you plan otherwise? If you still don't have a choice, now some necessities, like we say, even you're working today, sometimes you may need to go for a training. All right? The key thing is it is not part of your job requirement that you must travel and you cannot say no. All right? Training are not something that's part of a job requirement where it is built into your job duties to keep traveling. Okay, so that's the difference. All right, so I hope I answered that question, although it did, no one says that they asked that question. All right, but I think it's important to know since um, some of you are not sure what to do in that situation. Now, let's move to question number three. What does it mean to honor the wife? Now, last week we studied, last week we studied. Let's turn back to 1 Peter, chapter 3. Now, last week we studied, dwell with them according to knowledge. So we, we spoke about many things about knowledge, all right? The different kinds of knowledge that the man must have. So, young men, you must have this knowledge. So, look at your notes and start to think. I have to start preparing myself and have this knowledge. Now, then we come to the next part for the husband's duty to the wife and his role. Now, dwell with them according to knowledge, verse 7, giving honour unto the wife. So I ask the question, what does it mean to honour the wife? You, don't, you can't do that if you don't know what is honouring the wife. So I start with um, those at the back. CJ, what does it mean to honour the wife? treasure her as precious, show dignity, temperance, polite respect maybe. Alright, so to treat, to treasure her, show temperance, show, give her dignity oh. and patience. Yep, alright, yep, so some of those things, correct. But uh, yes, um, those are the things you, you do, you do, you have to do, that's correct. But what does it really mean, the word honour? Now you know the name Timothy, Timothy, alright, Timothy. Um, 
and the Greek word is is Time, all right. So from Timothy, all right. And this word honor is the word Time, all right. Timothy, her. What does it mean? What does Timothy mean? Now, Time means um, value. Put a value on, all right. Just like you look at something and then you you put a price on something, all right. Like it's a treasure, okay. Now, in other words, you you recognize. You recognize and respect that there is value. There is value. Now today, we live in the end times and um, women are often um, downtrodden, treated unfairly and so on. Why? Because men see them as valueless. Valueless. So this was also a problem um, in ancient times, all right? It's a problem, a sinful thing in society. So God says you must, you must not be like the rest of the world. Now look at verse 1. Just like the wives be in subjection to your own husbands. This was also a problem, all right, in society. And when wives submit themselves to their own husbands, even unbelieving husbands will be shocked will be surprised and they will even come to the Lord now likewise in the home men also have this problem of not valuing the the wife so but the Christian is not simply to say the wife is valuable and that is all the question is why is she valuable why is she valuable why do you think so um, okay move over here uh, now the ladies all right CP Because God values her. Alright. And the wife is also important to bring up godly seed. Alright, first one. Now look at chapter 3, verse 7. Now just look at the second part. I know there's weaker vessel. We study what is that. Heirs together with the grace of life. What is heirs means they are... Co, they have co-inheritance in heaven with us. In other words, Jesus Christ also died for them. What is her value? The same value as the men. Jesus Christ died for the women as well. And they will go to heaven as well. Now, there was some wickedness in men's thinking at that time that say, well, women cannot go to heaven. And even if they went to heaven, they will become men. That kind of ideas. <laughs> All these people suddenly look up at me. All right. So that is the, the wicked heart, sinful attitude of mankind. Now, but it is just, is it just simply about gender? No. The value that the Christian have must have towards the wife. Now, it is not just about a gender issue. It is she, her soul. Her soul is also purchased by Christ. Now, do you realize that what, what that means? I always remind people that Christian men... Your spiritual father-in-law is actually God. It's actually God because she is God's daughter as well. She's a child of God. All right. So, yes, so CP, you're right. That's one of the key reasons why we must see her with great value every time you look at her. Now, then CP also mentioned because she is to give birth to children and bring up godly seed um, for you. So she's just a machine producing children and uh, looking after your house and your kid for you. Is that, is that the case? Uh, Hazel, what do you think? Yes or no? Okay, you don't have a choice. You only can answer yes or no. Say again. <laughs> yes or no, that's all. Only, yeah, sorry? Say again. Yes! Hazel, say yes! Oh, all the women are going to be very angry to, at you tonight. Hazel, say yes. Now, the reality is the truth. Why is she valuable to you? Because God said, honor your wife, you know, your own wife. This is not just saying general or all women are saved, all women, we should treasure her in society, in the church. Um, it is correct. But here is specifically your wife means there is a specific reason why she is valuable to you not just general 
Why? It means she has been chosen by God for you. That is why you must treasure her. You must see her as valuable. This is a wife that God chose for you. Matthew is not interested because he said, I'm too young to think of. Matthew, one day if God wants you to get married and then God brings a, a lady to you and you marry her, who chose that woman for you? God. Now when God chooses something for you, it is very specifically um, matched for you that will be very helpful to you and it, it is well thought through. It's like a, a present that someone gives a lot of thought to, prepares over time and then finally brings it to you. All right? So it's, it's chosen by God for you. That is why you value her. Now sometimes men, men value other women value um, other women, value other wives, but not their own. They don't realize that this wife is God's choice for me. Now, then the other question is then, now why did God choose her for you? Why did God choose her for you? According to knowledge. All right, Aaron, what, was, what, what did we study? What's the purpose of marriage? To bear, to bear godly seed. He goes straight there. What's another one? Before that. Mutual help, right? In Malachi, God says, the reason why I bring two flesh into one, to make you one flesh and you dwell together, is because she is supposed to be a mutual companion for you. And remember in Genesis, all right, in Genesis, Caleb, why did God make Eve for Adam? That he would be a, a help, meet for her, help meet. All right, meet is M-E-E-T, suitable. A help that is suitable, a help that is specific for Adam. God did not say, I will, move, I will, I will, create, I will, I will, I will create a few women and then, uh, well, Avisha 101 is fine. It was very specific, one that is specific for Adam. All right, so again, the help, help, but it is meat. It is, that is like, like, you know, dovetailed, like perfectly matched for Adam. So when God chose for Adam, this is a perfect help for Adam in terms of spiritual companionship. So you must value her. She is your spiritual help. And then there is also, we study in Malachi, that God says, I bring two persons together, two and I seek godly seed. All right. So it is indeed. Otherwise, why get married? It is actually to to legally have children and then bring up godly seed for the next generation. So God does say it's for those purposes. Now, why, why do people hesitate to say yes? Only yes or no? Because they see it. Whoa, so you're saying I'm a, a, a wife is just simply a reproductive machine and, uh, and, and, uh, and a washing machine and a cooking machine at home. That's all. Right. You see, the world makes what God says as very wonderful, as something for you to, to, to value. And listen carefully. Now, please look at chapter 3, verse, verse, um, verse 4. Now, a godly wife that follows God's way is in the sight of God great price. Now, please link great price in verse 5 to verse 7. Put value on her, honor. So, ladies, you must know that being a help to someone and bearing children to bring up godly seed, you must not imbibe the ways of the world by say, well, this is very denigrating. All right, it, it makes you like just nothing. God says it is great price. God says I bring you together for that purpose, all right? So, is it wrong? Yes, people will laugh at you. You go, you go and meet your friends one day when you get married, uh, if you got intent for you to get married, and then they ask you, um, what, do you what are you doing? Then they, say, I'm, then they will say, I'm a CEO of this, this cosmetic company and, and all that kind of thing. What do you do? And they say, well, I'm a housewife. 
I have three children. I'm very busy looking after them. And I'm very busy helping my husband. And then they will probably don't know how to answer you. They probably think, oh, you poor thing. All right? But God created marriage for that purpose. So there's nothing wrong. That's why I say you can only say yes or no. The Christians should not shrink back and say, uh, I'm not willing to say that. All right? So understand, see things from God's perspective. In other words, women, when you do get married and you fulfill your role, God says you are very valuable and God then tells the husband, please value her. That is what it is. Please value her. Not please. Actually, it's a command, so no please. All right? And there's no command, no please. Value her. That is what it is. That's it. All right, so why? So what it means is, is put a great price on her. Value her. Why? Because she's chosen for you very specifically and she has a very important role in the kingdom of God in your marriage. That is why you better value her, treasure her. All right, so now, what about ladies? Then, remember last week I said, when the men, when, when the father takes your hand and gives it to your future husband, if God intends to you to get married, then you keep looking at your husband. You feel the pressure now? You feel the load now? Uh, you're going to, you're now responsible. Yeah, you feel it? You feel it? Pastor always remind you, right? Now I have something to remind you. All right? Just when your hand is put into his hand, God says this, you are supposed to be of value to him. He's supposed to value you. You're supposed to be of value to him. All right? So, girls, now, um, you are supposed to help him. Your life now is dedicated to be his help. God, if you end up in that marriage, may God say, I designed you to be his help. Hence, God says, Love, be lovers of their own husbands. You are now to love him and be his very valuable, useful, highly designed to suit him kind of life, mutual help. Okay? So now you also have a very great load on you. Am I going to fail in being a valuable wife? Now, number one. Number two, it means also this. Now, to help, that definitely is spiritual. All right? It is definitely spiritual. But what is the help for? Maybe I'll ask the men, why do you want God to give you a help? Uh, okay, not many grown up. Enoch! <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, all these adult things. You know, you got to pay attention because one day, if God wants you to get married, you must realize this. Enoch, why do you want a wife, if God wants you to get married, why do you want a wife to help you? Help you do what? Wash your clothes. Cook for you. Say again. Clean the house. Well, you add to the list. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Wash the clothes. Still not enough. Um, um, uh, what was that? Iron your clothes. Cook for you. And also, you must add clean the house as well. All right. Why? Why do you want a wife to do all that? So that Enoch can wake up later in the daytime. I used to have to clean up, I don't have to. So that Enoch can play your computer games and go out with your friends and come back late to a clean house. Why do you want that, Enoch? Why do you want a wife to do all that for you? So that you can? So that you can work? All right, so that you can work, all right, you work so that so that you can work to buy all the all the nice cars and houses that you want. So I can support the family. All right, very good. We come to that later. And what else, Enoch? That's all. Say again. So that I can give offerings to God. Very good. And last one, Enoch. Why do you want to come home and then have dinner and then be able to finish your dinner quickly and then do what? 
do Bible study, do family worship with the family, go for Bible studies, go to serve God in church, right? Now, so please remember, now I am a help to him. Will I fulfill that role to enable him, number one, to serve God better? Number two, to, well, yes, to, to make sure that you participate in giving to the Lord's work. Um, and what else do you say? And do family, so that I have the time to study God's word and to, and therefore to lead my family well. It is now the wife, when you say, this man is my husband, now your life is dedicated to help him achieve all those things. Not just be giving birth to children and then cooking and that's it, with no purpose. All right, so now for the wife, it is also a great responsibility that now falls on you. Do you want to be that? Now that is the question. If you do not, and say, no, I want to have my own life, I want to not, to be, respons not be responsible for helping someone to succeed in serving God, then do not get married. Right? Do not get married because that is your responsibility. It's just like the man. If you do not intend to sanctify the wife, make her a godly woman, and to bring up godly seed together for God, do not get married because that is the purpose of marriage. All right? Mutually help each other spiritually and to make sure that you have godly seed for the next generation. Now, this is the purpose of marriage and this is the most wonderful purpose in marriage. Please know that. You may think that, well, having a lot of holidays, um, and not alone anymore in the house and all that are great. Well, yes, it comes with those perks, but that is not the end of the story. Now, but, it's, but what I'm trying to say is this, ladies. Um, okay, uh, don't ask those things here, right? Ask those things here. All right, now, now uh, Michelle, who washes your clothes? Who irons your clothes? Oh, you, okay, all right, a bit, all right. Um, who cooks for you every meal? Mom. Mom. Um, who, who cleans the house and you just come back, it's a clean house? Mom, Mom. all right. Uh, say again? <laughs> Sounds like spoiled bread. Right? Sounds like spoiled bread. Oh, so next time when you have children, you say, don't be a spoiled bread. <laughs> all right, go do everything yourself, husband and, and child. Now, those are, those are things that, that, that the mother does, all right? She does it for you, correct? Now, do you realize the responsibility, the moment the hand, uh, touch, transfer, they say, then you look at his clothes, you look at his, everything, <laughs> all right? You look at his stomach, it's like, wow, that stomach sounds to be growling now, all right? All of a sudden, no more mommy will do that for him. Because now you have to take care of him physically, but always remember, why am I taking care of all this physically for him? All right? If you do all this for him, then all he does is watch TV, sleep later and all that, then you are supposed to be his help, right? Say, husband, I do all this for you so that, so that you will serve the Lord, so that you can study God's word and, and feed us, right? All right? So is that. So all of a sudden in marriage, you also have a very big load that falls on you because you are that value to the husband now you are that value the value is, the end value is not you cooked for him you washed for him you you brought up children for him that is not the end value right the end value is really to enable him to serve god right so you suddenly have a big load on you as well so both of you standing there both of your shoulder must suddenly wash sink down and sink down and sink down all right very heavy both not just the man not just the woman now that also reminds the the woman now, you want to be that valuable woman? Yes. God says, now be that valuable woman. Then therefore choose the man very carefully. Alright? Now, if you think that man is not godly, not, not, not interested in, in um, serving, not interested in the Lord, not interested in studying the Word, not interested in teaching you God's Word, don't marry him because you will end up really be the washing machine, cooker, iron, ironing machine. What else do you want to say? Um, cleaning machine, right? Cleaning machine, and that is all. You really end up as that. You really end up as that. Choose very carefully. That is the point. Now, because at the end result, you just do that and there's no spiritual usefulness. Alright, so don't just marry someone because he's good looking, he's funny, he is... He, 
Nobody wants you, right? You think, you think nobody wants you. So this one, all right, I'll settle for this as well. Please don't, all right? You're supposed to be someone very valuable. If he's not going to value you, then don't marry him. So please don't make him value your looks and all those kind of things, all right? Value spiritual usefulness. Okay, so that is the meaning of value. So men, do you know what it means to value her? Look at her, not as a maid at home, not as a cleaning machine at home, and that is all. The value that she brings is always spiritual. Even the physical things that she does for you, the thing that you need to value is then make use of that value. Make use of that value means whatever she has helped you in, use the time, all right, for spiritual usefulness for your home, for, for the kingdom of God. All right, so now that is honor, that is honor. So next time you say honor, every time you look at a woman, a lady, can I honor her? Can I honor her? It's very important. Can I honor her means she's good looking, all right? Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying you must marry ugly people, all right? She's good looking, but it's not the reason why you marry her, all right? She is, she is good at good at cooking she's good at many things she's submissive and then there is the end that is not how you look at someone all right is she someone that has all this because it will help me fulfill my duties my spiritual duties that is why i honor her all right so don't honor the wrong things don't honor looks honor she's funny she laughs at my joke when nobody laughs at my joke all right she understands me she likes the same kind of music as me that's why i value her wrong answer okay so now let's move yes uh, that is part of the values um like all the things you mentioned same taste of food cooking etc um but like um would, would that contribute to the values something that you should you should you should take note of also is it because no, no, just now you mentioned the only value to a wife is baby machine, cooking machine, and mutual help, right? That is the only value. For spiritual purpose, that is the only value. No, not machine. Not machine. <laughs> yeah. Machine is how the world look at it and think that is the end purpose. It's just a machine. Right, but then right. for the spiritual purposes... The, the spiritual value is mutual help and bringing up godly seed. But that's the only value. That's the key value. Key or only? Key value. Now, when you say, do we value, like she have the same taste, like the same food, I don't think you want to use the word value, right? I put value on that. But is there a weightage? Not so much of value, but checking on compatibility. All right? Um, yes, you should. So you're talking about, should I consider, um, do we have the same taste in, 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 in food, in um, music, in, in these things, is it? Is that part of the value? No, 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 no. it's more of like, because it's not when you ask Hazel the question, the yes or no question. Hmm. You worded the question as, um, is women's value only in baby machine, cooking machine, ironing machine, etc, etc, right? Hmm. When you say only, then those are the only two things that cause the one to be valuable. Okay, all right, so, so, is, so you, you're saying my question was yes or no? That the wife's only value is producing babies and um, taking care of the home, for example, right? Yeah. Is that the only value? Yeah, the only value. Um, yeah. so that is not um, a precisely worded statement, but that is uh, a loosely worded, frivolous statement to bring up the, the point that people will react to such statements, all right? All right, understand what I'm saying? So, no. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you want to say something and then you will say in a very exaggerated way just to bring a point across. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. So that was the, the wording of that question is for that. Oh. All right. So after that, I clarified that the, the key value is mutual help and, um, and um, bringing and producing offspring to bring up as godly seed. All right. And the world would see that statement as just machines. That's all. But the Christians should never see that statement as machine. That's all. That's all. So don't read too much into that question. That that is the only value. 
right? That is, that is a loosely exaggerated way of um, saying things. Um, you know, today I, I learned this word because of recent crimes. Egregious, 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 egregious. I think it's egregious. All right, egregious. All right, shocking way of saying things. That's it. All right, shocking. It's just to shock her. That's all. All right. To see that violence, she say, "What well, if just if it's just to produce baby and not? No, I don't think that we should. Yeah, it's just it's just to bring up a point. That's it. Okay. okay so then mm. my next question would be: Then the only value to a valuable life is mutual health and God Yes. Yes. Things. Correct. Things other than that are not valuable, but just of weight to weight, just of Something you should carefully consider. But yeah. The value. Yes, the value is that. The value is that. Okay, so that's important. Now, so all the other things that you should consider, because, you see, it goes back to the question. Because you have to submit to him, right? You have to submit to him. Now, you also must know there are some things that you cannot tolerate. Alright? You cannot tolerate. And then you have to ask yourself, am I willing to submit? So he loves spicy food. Alright? An example. You must ask yourself, I'm someone who really... If I don't like spicy food, I'm never ever going to cook spicy food. If you know you're like that, then say I then I should not marry this person because I'm going to I'm going to be someone that I have to submit to him in all things. Alright? Right? So the Christian, once you know the value, then you realize that what is what is what is some changes in this area? Um, I'm okay. I'm okay. Alright? Because you know there's a bigger value. All right, so Michelle is a bigger value than everything else. Yeah, it's important, but you have to be very honest to check. Yeah. Um, so when we come to the men, you also have to do the same thing. All right, which is what we'll come to the next question. Now, not yet. Right. Next question is: What does a weaker vessel mean? What does a weaker vessel mean? Now, what do you think it means? Now, this word um, is usually used to, to emphasize physical weakness. All right? Physical weakness. All right? Um, like, like someone who is physically less strong. Okay? So, by and large, now people argue a lot about this word. But now, it's coupled with weaker vessel, and, and um, God has already spoken about the spiritual things. Now, I believe this has more to do with, with physical. She is created by God to be physically less strong than you. All right? Therefore, make sure you are careful with her. All right? Careful. Now, I know some may say because of the whole uh, maybe i ask i ask okay who's next all right next kathleen kathleen um do you agree that women are physically weaker than men um yeah probably not they're probably not i probably don't agree with that okay yeah. all right all right so if i were to um, generally speaking same age and all that do an arm wrestle um or there is a 20 kilogram load to carry by and large do you think the men will be able to do it better than the women Why would some? But why would some? If they were raised to be stronger. They were raised to be stronger, alright? So the question is this. Now when God says that I have created the woman um, physically weaker, men, please protect her. Please be know, know that you are her protector, the husband, for example. Now it's general, general. Now if you ask, who is this great woman tennis player now? What's her name? She's been winning a lot of games, right, in Australia. All right. If you ask her to arm wrestle with most of the men, I think most of the men will lose. All right. But it's the training, correct? The training. But equally, when two male and female together, by and large, you would say that the men would normally be stronger. All right. Will be will be um, the the physically stronger person. All right. So by and large, all right, general. So now. There is another thing that we have to um, come to realize. Now God does now God is the creator of men and women, correct? Now if God says now whether you want to take it as weaker or whatever, 
you ha- cannot run away from the fact that the Creator says that I did create woman to be of the physically less strong situation, uh, person, generally speaking. All right. Um, now, so now with that, then God says, please make sure that you still honor her. Now, why? By and large, do men not honor women? Because now, just like in school, right? If you're physically weaker, you're physically weaker. Do you normally, or really, the bullies normally would choose the physically weaker ones to bully? Anna, is that correct? Right? It's normal. All right. Now, God is saying, I have. I'm telling you, I've created men and women, and women are gen as creation are weaker. Now, just because they are, and I created them to be so, you do not dishonor them. Because the tendency when we know someone is weaker. Now, abusers at home. Usually, I'm not saying that women do not, do, there's not women, a wife a, that abuse husband. But usually it's the other way, right? It's usually it's the other way. Um, um, even in society. Why? Because they are weaker. They prey on them. That is how it is. Alright, so, so yes, if, if you were to pick um, bodybuilders who are brought up, trained, uh, by and large men are going to be weaker, alright, but by and large you will see, um, um, they are, they are, they can, can they be as strong? Yes, but is it natural? Um, typically not. Now, p- but please remember, weaker does not mean intellectually weaker, alright? That's why here is more a physical thing, a protection, a protectiveness over the wife that the husband must have. Now, people say chivalry is dead. Why is chivalry? Chivalry is your always a considerate to the woman, caring for them, knowing that they are, they, they have, that you should protect them. Okay, so God says that is what you're created to be like. So God says they are, they are more delicate in that sense. The man must honor her and not bully her. But she's no less valuable. That is the whole point. Now, at this point then, I must say, um, because of the the whole um, um, feminist movement, is women are equal, right? So the constant fight that women are equal. um, So you may be brought up to even say, I cannot accept that women are weaker than men, all right? I don't think that's what you're saying, right? Naturally, if, if two equal, just men and women that grow up normally, and they were to, they were to by and large, um, do something like, um, f- that requires a lot of physical strength, uh, by and large, the men would generally be the stronger one. Now, but this whole equality thing is a rejection of, of even God's ideas. You have to remember that. Now, even in the home, that is why today women say, I don't need men. I don't need my husband to protect me. But you see, God says that. God says she is a weaker vessel. Please make sure you honor her, protect her, care for her, treasure her. Alright? So, is this something that is evil? No, it's something that God has planned. God has has said so. Um, It's just like grace. Do you need daddy and mommy to take care of you? You're very weak, you know. Are you weak? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. The reality is, is, is reality. All right? So God says, now men, please know, I expect you to be protective and caring and to provide. Right? Just now, I think one of the things that they will say is to, is, is to make sure you care for her. Okay? So... There was something else I wanted to say. Oh, okay, I'll leave it as that. Yes. Does that mean you need to find a six foot macho member? Does it mean you need to find a six foot macho member? Oh, why? Because you're six foot. I don't know, but because if you like, if it doesn't. So don't don't marry skinny and weak person. If you're the one having to. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, oh, I have to protect you all the time because you're you're so weak. Now that's why we say understand the spiritual value first, the spiritual value. And now you can have a big macho man who is very strong and all that, but he doesn't care about spiritual things and all that. No use, right? 
Um, I think yes, there is there is um, a need to understand. Now this is the man's duty to do so. Does it always mean that if if a man is 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 um, less strong than you? We are talking more about courage as well, right? Not just strength, right? So for example, this room is on fire, right? And then all run, okay? And then you see, Ichung is big, right? Ichung is quite big. And then before we say all leave, Ichung is already downstairs outside. All right? And he is like trying to ask my husband to help me. All right? Um, is that kind of that is the natural um, sense of protectiveness? Yeah, yeah. You be surprised. You be surprised. A very skinny even woman. Uh, or men, what they can do when they see something that they love is affected. All right? You've seen of very skinny men, very skinny women lift cars to get their babies out. All right? You'll be surprised. But it is especially talking about the, the natural sense of protectiveness over the woman. All right? No man should marry. I think I'm going to marry a very strong wife so that when we walk in the dark alley, yeah, then she's going to be the one I'll push in front and please protect me. You should never think like that. That is the, that is the thing that God is saying. All right? Okay. Now, now then, then, next. Now, how is the husband to honor the wife? Okay, we've got to finish this. How is the husband to honor the wife? Now, we understand that. Now, so, number one, now, look up here. Well, we have spoken about your, your attitude of valuing her. All right? Because God chose her for you and she is to fulfill a purpose in your life. Now, but also, there is the practical things that you need to do, right? So what does it mean to honour the wife, practically speaking? I know on a high level it means value her because of all these things, but practically, how are you to honour her? Now, there are, like for example here, honour her, giving honour unto her as being um, unto a weaker vessel. Now, one of the things also is, you can say that women are also weaker than men in a sense of emotional, emotional control, emotionally, all right, emotionally. Um, now, typically, do you see when, when at marriages, for example, or at funerals, all right, you will see typically the women are more moved, right? Typically, they are the ones who are emotionally moved and they, and they are they are easily uh, affected, correct? Now, I'm not saying emotionally weak huh? means, means like, for example, now I think, for example, women bearing children, alright? Are they stronger than men in that sense? You know, men, if they get a small cut, ah, very painful, I cannot wash the place, ah, I cannot help you, ah, I cannot open the door, right? Women go through your monthly cramps, alright? Like nothing, and then no one knows. When women bear children and give birth to children, a lot of pain. Some husband faint in the in the in the delivery room. Oh, blood! Oh, pain! Faint. All right. Now, not 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 talking about that kind of emotional strength. All right. Now, I'm talking about they 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 are easily moved. They are more delicate. All right. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You see, the women they they were more moved with Christ, love, and all that. Right? That also means that when something happens, they are easily moved. Okay? So, now it also means practically the husband must understand that, live with them with knowledge. Right? So, if, if someone passes away and you go to the funeral, right? and then they cry, yeah, can you stop crying? You know? Cry, cry, cry. Please understand, that is their makeup. Right? And sometimes they, they, are, they, they, are, they are concerned about something. Yes, they... they they're more emotional, right? So you must know and therefore be, be careful to handle her delicately, right? to encourage, to strengthen. They are different, right? Between guys, we, we are just, oh, what's wrong? And that's it, that's it. Sometimes emotionless, right? Emotionless. Um, women are different, wives are different. So that is one of the things is, is to be more to know their maker and therefore be more patient, be more careful. Now, I, I will also cover 
I don't think I'll cover it tonight. When we come back, what it is not, all right? What it is not. What honoring the wife is not. Now, so, yes, so emotional care, tenderness towards them. That is one. Now, other, another thing has the husband to honor the wife practically. Now, of course, physically, be protective. Be protective over her. Now, there are things that you must realize that, yeah, you're, you're supposed to, to do housework, right? But certain things, you expect her to climb up high and then, and then to change the light bulbs or to carry some heavy things and all that. Please don't think that she's the, supposed to be helped. Please go do all this. I won't do it. All right, so there is a sense of protectiveness, carefulness um, over that. So don't send her out at night on her own. All right, that kind of thing. Now, what else? Uh, just now it was also mentioned just now it was also mentioned that to provide right so I don't know whether CJ was reading some definition to provide for her to provide for her now we're not saying that women cannot work and women cannot make a living and cannot women cannot um, be better than men at um, in the social realm and that they don't make better um, 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 workers in the workforce and they're less intelligent we're not saying that at all Right? But now remember, if she's your wife and now you have children and she has to now be careless looking after those things. Now it is wrong for you to say that, well, you know, I, I want you to make money as well. You know, I'm working. I want you to make money as well. I want to buy a big house. All right? So go work. And at the same time, I expect you to do all these things. Right? So you are expected to provide for her. Remember that. And don't, don't, don't have emotional blackmail over her. You know, I bring the, I bring the salary home, all right? So I'm just going to give you this small amount and then you please, you go and, you go and take care of everything, all right? That is, again, um, not honoring her, not caring for her as a weaker vessel. Yes, in a sense, she is in a weakened position because now you tell her to take care of the home, take care of the child. In a sense, she's in a weakened position. And then you, you um, pressurize her by saying, well, you know, if you don't do what I say, I won't give you any money. Even to buy what you need for yourself. Okay, God says, please don't do those things. Now, these were some of the things that women had to go through um, in those days and now today as well. All right, so... Now, the other thing is... Don't belittle her. Honor someone, you honor someone, you don't belittle someone. There are, now if, if you're a boy, if you're a boy or a young man that, that, lit, that likes to tease girls because you feel that they are easy and good to be bullied, are you like that as a brother, Matthew? I should ask, I should ask Grace here. Or I should not ask her. Right? If you're such a person, you must know that you better not get married because God expects you not only to be protective, to be very sensitive um, to their, their, their emotional makeup and know how to help them, God, and to provide for them. Now, God says don't belittle them. Honor, you honor someone, you don't belittle them. Now, you know, for example, like just at, just at our um, Australia Day, the government honors certain people in society, correct? And then in some ceremonies in the nation, they honor war veterans, correct? They honor war veterans. Do they go and belittle them and, 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 and make fun of them and say, look at all these veterans, crippled? Of course they don't do that, right? So, now young boys, I want to say this now, you learn. Who have sisters at home? Enoch. Your sister is here. She's bigger and taller than you. Now, <laughs> all, right, Enoch. all right, Enoch, do you feel protective over Anna? <laughs> Pardon? Okay, try again. Enoch, do you feel very protective over Anna? So, for example, all right, for example, um, Matthew bullies Anna and Grace. What would you do? Join, join Matthew? What would you do? Take so long, ah. <laughs> I thought you mean that I would jump to protect them, and they're my sisters. 
Okay, you must build that in you. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. All right, I don't cover this with downstairs. All right, they're grown up. Now, young men, you must begin to build in your heart. Matthew, understand. I'm always very protective of my sister, my mother. I am naturally like that. Understand that? Because when you grow up, then you will be naturally like that with your wife. Understand that? All right? So, you must be protective over, over them. Now, if it is your own wife, it's your own sister and your own mother, and you don't, you're not protective, would you be protective over your wife? Very low likelihood, right? All right, so young men. Now, even in church, in church, when you come into the room, all right, when you see there are girls and they, 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 they need help in something, all right, you must naturally be the one who wants to help them. You may be even weaker now, all right? Your sister is much bigger than you, right? But just naturally, I, I want to help my sister. All right? It's not because she's weaker, she's stronger, but that is, that, is, that is what I am. Okay? Understand that? Okay. Do you bully Grace at home? Grace. Okay, this is what I ask. Grace, does he not bully you at home? No. All right. Good. You sure? <laughs> if I already say no, just in case, go back and get bullied. <laughs> Right, good to hear that. All right, so it must be like that from young age. Now, young men, it's the same. All right, we go for all day outreach, and then the van reaches there, and all the heavy equipment in there or okay, church camp. All right, and then you're all chatting, and then you see you see the girls helping to bring down things. What's the natural response? Uh, I think I think. Let me see who. Ah, uh, Michelle, so tall. <laughs> I think she's stronger than me. I leave it to her. You know, it must be a natural tendency to help. Okay, to to take over all those physical um, dangerous tasks. Now, women, do you like to be protected? Jillian? It depends. It depends. <laughs> what well, depends on what? Like, if, if they ask if I need help, that's because I that's nice. But you don't have to force. Okay, if, if they ask them whether I need help, yes, I, I, it's nice, but you don't have to force yourself to say, can I help you, is it? No, I don't force them to do it. But if I say it's fine. Oh, I don't have to force Jillian, alright? If she says she's fine. Just help. Her. Just help. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, so, um, there is nothing wrong to be provided for. Please remember that, women. The world has changed your thinking to say that if my husband provides for me, then I am, then I am useless. Then I am um, nobody. Right? God has ordained, God has ordained that the men provide. In fact, God says that if a man provide not for his, if the man provide not for his household. He is worse than an infidel. So please know that the expectation... Now, please turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Alright? Now, look at verse 3. God says, honour widows that are widows in need. Now, honour. Honour the widows. Same word. Now, one of the things to honour them is to provide for them. That is one of the things. Provide for them. Now, verse 4, But if any widow have children or nephews, male, let them first show piety at home. So the males are expected. So it's a, biblical under, it's a biblical expectation of God on men. So don't let the whole um, feminist movement make you think that, no, I, I intend to provide myself. I don't want my husband to provide for me. Now, God just simply says, that is my creation. That is how I care. I intend it to be. Now, look further down. All right? So, God says nephews. God did not say nieces. God said nephews. Now, look further down. Verse 8. But if any provide not for his masculine, his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Right? Please understand that. So, women, you will be constantly taught. If you don't, even if you have children, you don't work, you are nobody. Your husband provides for you, you, it is so, so embarrassing for you. Please don't let the world make you think like that. You are valuable in providing help. 
All right? If you work, he works, then where is the home help going to be? How, how he's going to work? Work out, all right? So understand that. And bringing up your child yourself is very different from leaving your child in childcare and let, let the world teach them whatever they want and our unbelieving relatives. It is different at that young age. All right, so yes, provide for them. That is one of the things you must remember. Now, what else? I'm just trying to skip some. Now, please ensure that you do not... Well, I want to say more about that do not denigrate her. Right? Do not gossip about her. Do not speak evil about her. Because today men, when they get together, they like to, they like to complain about their wives at the workplace or among friends. You must never ever do that. Remember that. Remember that you are supposed to sanctify her. We say, dwell with her according to knowledge, right? One of the knowledge you must have is, God says, sanctify the wife as Christ sanctified the church, correct? Sanctify the wife as Christ sanctified the church. I'm looking mainly here because the guys are here. Sanctify the wife as, God, as Christ sanctified the church. Now, you are supposed to help her to become godly and spiritual. Now, before I forget, uh, ladies, please understand the role of the husband is to help you be sanctified. So, respond to her. Respond to him when he, when he points out things. Now, also remember, husband, she is a help to you. A spiritual help, not just physical help. Spiritual help. Now, if you backslide and, you're, and you are making decisions that are sinful and you're, you, are, you are committing sin, she is your help. She's also going to help you to stop sinning. She will also speak with you. All right? So, now, back to this, sanctify her. Now, how do you honor your wife? How do you honor your wife? Maybe I just ask. Josiah, Josiah, are you easily impatient with Jemima? No. Right, very patient with her. She's not here, you know, so... <laughs> so, you, you don't tend to be easily impatient with her? No, okay, good. Now, if you find, men, if you find that you're easily impatient with, with people, especially ladies, now, you better know that you are not ready to be a husband. You better train yourself. Now, you're supposed to sanctify her. Means, if she falls into sin, or she has a certain sinful weakness, not that you don't have. And she has a certain sinful weakness. Now, you're not to look at her and say, why are, you, why are you so sinful? Now, there are some husbands that are like that. And then they go to church, and then they tell everybody, you know, my wife, uh, she has this, hope, this problem, you know, that kind of thing. You don't honor her. Like I said just now, when they honor the, the war veterans, when they honor someone that they say these are national um, um, heroes, they don't do that, all right? Do these national heroes have weaknesses? They do. But you don't do those things. Now, the other thing is, you don't dishonor her by... Because she's weaker. Okay. Um, do you have... Situ All right. Uh, Shining, when you open cans at home, you know, those, those bottles, um, do you ask Sujin to open it once in a while? Sometimes. Why? Why you cannot? All right. So what does Sujin say to you? Why are you so weak? He said, please refer to this verse. Right. And he said, true. He said, give me, give me. Give me, give me, let me show you. Right. Then, okay, don't open also. Come, both of us do it. Um, all right. So you, you, the husband was saying, why are you so weak? Why can't you do this? Why can't you go, go, go out at night and throw the rubbish? Why, why can't you carry this? Why can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you? Wait. Okay, drivers. Elaine, Elaine you drive as well, right? Does Yi Chung complain about your driving? Why can't you park? Does he? No. <laughs> Maybe because you're a better parker than him, right? So why can't you? Why? I cannot park. Come, come. Just, just stop, stop, stop. Let me. Ah, that is how we behave. Now, if you find that you're someone that's like that, please don't get married. 
Because God says you're not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to honor, honor your wife. Okay, men are easily guilty of that. That's why God has to command that to all men. Right? We become very impatient. All right? And yes, they may not do something um, that you're very used to doing, like parking. Why are you so stupid? That kind of thing. Right? Now, I actually sometimes sit in cars and I, I cringe, I don't know what to do. Some like Christian couples that are in the car and they behave like that. The husband towards the wife, and then the wife is also disrespectful to the husband. This is not supposed to be the Christian marriage because they don't understand these principles. All right? These principles. So honor her, not denigrate her. Joshua, right? You have a grown up sister. Did you, did you used to be very impatient and. Uh, uh, um, uncaring for her or naturally protective <laughs> depends <laughs> depends when we are at our bad behavior right? so we all must be honest we all must be honest ok so men are you ready to to lead about a woman you better ask yourself now but it goes more than that it goes more than that now you are Wait, let me. Yes, so please speak respectfully. That is the whole point. Now, actually, if you go further down, uh, if you go further down, First um, Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Look at it. Finally, be of all of one mind, have compassion of one another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, be courteous. All right, a man that. A, a man that honors his wife, his wife treats treats the wife like he treats any other brethren. Be courteous. We are often very courteous to friends, to others, but not to those that are close to us. Now, but there is one thing that I must address here. There is no place in a man hitting a woman, hitting his wife. All right. Now, many of these home abuse cases where men feel that the woman is weaker, unless you marry a karate black belt, <laughs> it's different, all right? there's always an exception. They abuse them physically. Now, this verse, honor your wife as unto a weaker vessel, is a clear warning to the men. Never lay hand on the woman you are supposed to be very protective of her. Remember that. Matthew, have you ever pushed? Have you ever pushed Gracia when you're angry? Sometimes. All right, you have a serious problem. I'm not joking. All right, so you must never. So you learn tonight. If Daddy and Mommy ask you, what do you learn tonight? I must never ever push a girl. Okay? Right? No matter what, I must never. Enoch, have you ever pushed your sisters? <gasps> okay, confession night. <laughs> confession night. Must never, never ever, all right, in your heart. From a young age, I will never, they are the weaker vessel. I'm supposed to be always protective of them. Never, ever, ever even think about it. Okay? Yes, you might get angry sometimes, you may say some things that you do not mean, which you should not, but never ever raise your hand. Yes? To clarify, that mm. doesn't mean Rachel can push back you, right? Say again? To clarify, that doesn't mean Gracia can push back you. Doesn't mean that Rach, Gracia can push Matthew. Ma Gracia, have you ever pushed Matthew? <laughs> I expect you not to say you're so soft-spoken and so gentle. Alright, now you're supposed to, okay, turn to chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 4. But the hidden man of a heart, which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Alright? And then verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. So he's always respectful. Alright? So definitely not. Not. not I. Alright. So when I teach Bible study, uh, um, sometimes I cover both, right? But here the passage is talking about honor the weaker vessel. Alright? So doesn't mean that if I don't say that, then the girls can bully the husband. They're also husband bulliers. All right? They're also husband bashers. So it goes without saying. All right? But here, yeah, by and large, 
that. Okay, so remember that. Never. Now, but, okay, let me ask. Uh, Joshua, have you ever emotion? Have you ever physically pushed um, Hannah when she, when you are teenagers? No, right? No, but can you still abuse her? You can say things. You can be emotionally abusive, all right? Because you know they are uh, emotionally weaker, all right? Men, no matter how you abuse them, oh, who cares? Right? Maybe they don't even understand. Right? They're so dense, they don't even know you're abusing them emotionally. Right? Women, they, they sense. All right? They know, they sense. And then because of that, you do more of it at home. Okay? So emotional abuse is another thing. You are to honor her as onto a weaker vessel. Okay? In fact, you should be even more careful to choose your words. Because they think about things that you may not think about. Okay? Can be good or can be bad. Now, you know what's gas lighting? I learned a new word, gas lighting. All right? All the young people know. Gas lighting. Aaron, do you know what's gas lighting? Yes. Uh, Sujin, do you know what's gas lighting? <laughs> Our, the older generation doesn't know. When I said, came coming across gas lighting, I had to go look up the term. All right? Gas lighting. Okay, go look up the terms. All right? The young people know. It's basically, it's basically a, a, a emotional abuse. Right? You make the person feel like the person is insane, doubt themselves, and they begin to thought, maybe I'm... So because you are wrong, right? and you think that they're easy to abuse emotionally, what you do? You actually turn the whole thing around and, no, they are the, they are the wrong ones, and they are imagining things, and they are the ones who have done wrong. Right? And then after some time, they, they get emotionally abused. Okay, that is one example. So never ever. Now, if you are such a person, I seriously say, until you repent, you better not get married. Because the moment you repent, the moment you get married, God expects you to treat your wife with honor. And here, I would say this. Now, if ever, if ever, you grow up, and you're in this church, and I'm still a pastor, I'm alive, and your husband ever abuse you, Physically especially. The church will never cover up. Understand that. The church will be 100% behind you. Okay, I just say as well. If the woman, <laughs> your wife abuse you, right? It's the same. Right? We'll be 100% behind you. Because there are many instances where churches, church elders, they cover up. Right? It's a Christian love. They cover up. Now, we will never do that, all right? It is a legal situation. There will be church discipline, there's a legal situation. Yes, Shindra. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to ask something. All right, so please understand that. Why? Because of all these principles here, God says, husband, honor your wives as unto a weaker vessel. All right? Never ever do that. Now, I hope there's no such thing in our church. Okay, we take this very seriously because it is... It is unbiblical, it is sinful, it is horrible, even by the standards of the world. Okay? Now, now with all this, with all this, women, please choose carefully. Because you know that is what God says, the husband, how the God husband ought to honor you. Don't choose based on looks, funny, taste, and all that, and then don't think about these things. Now, sometimes it can be both ways. We are so infatuated, we are so love struck, so to speak. No matter what serious problems the men have, the woman just want to ignore. Right? Don't. You will, you will end up having a marriage that will not serve God's purpose. Remember that. Number one. Now, number two, don't have the idea which we covered at at BGR before, don't have the idea that, you know, I think I can make him love me so much that I can change him. Have you come across people who are like that? They're like that? You know, all the signs of problems are there. But, you know, there's this romantic idea, just like maybe the other way, alright, just to bring up, you know, taming the shrew, alright? No, I, 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 I will be so good, I'll be able to change her. 
the woman can be the same. You know, I, I, I can be so lovable and I can change his heart, I can change him. Until you know he is changed, do not marry him. Alright? So, please know that. Now, the main thing is this. Marriage is to serve God's purposes. When both play their roles, when both accept God's role for them, do you know you will have a marriage that is so powerful on earth, useful to God, and you will be able to bring up a generation of Christians that will fight God's battle against darkness and bring up church people to be godly, the next generation? That is what, when both play their roles, um, that is what it brings. Okay? Now, I think that is all I can cover tonight. And the next time we come back, we still have to, we do have to cover what it does not mean. Just like, just like when, you say, what, when we say, wives submit to your own husbands, what it does not mean. We also have to tell the husband, honor your wife, what it does not mean. Okay? Now, but actually I want to ask you one last question. One last question. Now, I think it's useful at this point. Actually, it's question, question number six. Now, how will you answer a Christian who says submission to husband is not relevant today and the doctrine promotes wife abuse? Alright, just give me three minutes. Question number six. From this passage in First Peter that we've covered over the last few weeks or many months, how will you answer a Christian? Okay, so now, may, maybe, maybe um, a Christian in another church comes to you, Shenrei, alright, comes to you and say, Shenrei, you know, your church uh, is really out of date, you know. This whole thing about women submit to husband is not relevant today. So that's the first part. How would you answer her? No, all these parts were, were actually for that time. Like how do you decide what does and doesn't apply to Yeah, so how, what, doesn't, what, what does and what does not. If wives submit to your own husband is only culturally, and the, those were the days that were the problem, then we should say that husband honor your wives, don't abuse them, don't emotionally abuse them, don't honor them, don't care for them, don't provide for them, don't love them, don't be respectful to them, don't... All these things are also cultural and it's not expected in the Christian marriage. This is. Alright, so yes, we said them, it is there and it is, it is not about a cultural thing. Alright, so next one. All right, to Michelle. So someone comes to you. All this kind of thing promotes wife. I mean, maybe I ask. So since you were asking just now, Kitlin. So someone comes to you, Kitlin. You know, if to believe in this kind of thing, it promotes wife abuse in the Christian marriage. Even, how would you answer them? Say again. Someone, sorry. So I guess if you don't know what's right and what's wrong, you say that one thing is completely wrong. Okay, so you don't know what is right, what is wrong. You can say one thing is completely wrong. Okay, so you say just because God says submit to the woman, you can't say that it's completely wrong. Okay, um, Jilin. The second part, <laughs> this kind of, you know, wife submit to your own husband, this kind of Bible teaching promotes wife abuse. Because I think you asked before, right, Michelle, you said, you know, if, if I submit, submit like that, I'll end up being abused, man. The person is going to bully me. Never, if you think that person is like that, you must never even start courtship. Understand that? If you ever have doubt that he's like that, you already said, no way. Okay? Yeah. Abuse happens not because the doctrine is wrong, but but human sinful nature. Yeah, you see, human sinful nature is like that already. To ask for submission really uh, really gives license to the husband to abuse the wife. Michel, uh, Hazel, last one. Yes, when they say that, you say, please don't quote just one part of the Bible. You know. God commands the husband to honor the wife. The Bible commands the husband not to be wife abusers. Right? So the Bible does not teach a doctrine that promotes wife abuse. The God commands against it very seriously. All right? Now how serious? How serious? Look at verse 7. How serious? 
as being heirs of together with the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You know, God threatened the men. If you don't honour your wife, I'm not going to hear your prayers. I'm going to leave you alone. God is not requesting you to honour your wife. God is threatening you with, I will not hear your prayers. Right? So the Bible is very serious about this. Understand that. Okay? Now, last but not least, men. Then I stick to the woman. Then we close. Men. Their wife, your wife, one day, all right? Your wife. You must be a husband that make your wife feel that she, she can trust you so much. And she knows that you honor her and care for her so much that whatever you ask her to do is always for her good and you're not abusive. Do you understand? That's the point of this passage. That your wife, you must be a man that your wife never doubts, never doubts that you would ever do or say anything. And when she has to do something that you ask her to do, that you're being abusive to her. Never. She must never feel that way. That is the point. Now, to the woman, I already said to Michelle, now if you ever feel that you cannot trust a man like that, implicitly, do not ever marry the person. Okay? So, make sure you sort things out first. Don't be blind. Alright? Love is not blind in God's eyes. Let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they're the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from